Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be framing out the floor of the Cedar Hollow, walking you guys through all of the steps on how I'm shoring up from the foundation piers, how I'm doing all my lateral bracing, and just overall the whole floor of the home. Okay, so let me walk you through the general plan for today. So earlier this week I picked up a whole bunch of lumber for framing this base. If you remember from the last video, we have 12 total piers, so three rows of four, and what we're going to be doing is making three beams that span each of the rows of four and then on top of that we're going to be running all the floor joists. So technically these concrete supports don't have tons of lateral bracing so say like a wind's hitting the home they're not <clears throat> they're not the best for that so we're going to have to be doing four by four kickers off of these four by four posts that stand up and hold up the beams. So we're going to be taking a four by four treated post standing it up vertical here and then sistering up these two by tens and running beams the entire length of all this on top of the posts. Before we dive into all this if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the like and subscribe button if you want to see how the cedar hollow turns out uh, i really appreciate it and let's dive into it and right on time we got a little emily showing up to come help frame my little helper for framing the base plate i have the plans on my phone for what the base plate's going to be and this is just a sketch i put together to get all the quantities for when i was buying materials earlier this week but these beams all need to be 28 feet long because each of the runners on the floor is going to run across them and they need to be able to transfer the load from the floor to the beams, which then transfer it over to the column. So we're gonna sister up these first two, set a screw, and then at the other end, we'll cut both of the boards so it makes a perfect 28 feet long. Not all these boards are perfectly the same side. So I'm just making sure it flushes out on top, like there. Just screwed together this first beam. I'm gonna run through, set a whole bunch more nails so it's a little more solid. All right, we're gonna make sure that my dyslexia isn't setting in and that this is actually 28 feet long. It's like 28 feet, one and a half inches, which I think we'll cheat it and just give ourselves an extra inch and a half inside. <laughs> So the next step is gonna be cutting the four x four posts that go on top of the piers. And this pretty much establishes the height of the floor. But we were saying that it would probably be a little bit better to have the floor higher. It's almost like more of a more of a feature. What do you think, babe? Floating in the forest. Yeah, <laughs> this is kind of cool. What we've done is I've taken the, the stomper that we use for like patting down before we set the piers. And I set the laser on it. With the laser being set on this post, it sets a perfectly flat plane here. So all we'll do is go take a tape measure, measure up from the base of the plate here, and that'll give us a perfectly level plane for setting all the beams. So Emma's was also just saying that it almost gives it treehouse vibes when it's a little bit higher up, which could be a nice plus for Airbnb because if you can check one of those like unique properties or if you can check like treehouse or whatever, that stuff does really well. First one, so the laser's over there, 21 right on the money. So just as a gut check, we checked out here and the laser line lands right there. So we're gonna take off like another quarter inch. First post is set, we're gonna go do the same thing. So we just cut all the posts here and I'm gonna show you guys why we went with these anchors over other anchors. So we could have just cut this board again because we cut it about a quarter inch shy. I don't know if you can see that but the laser is slightly above, so we need to bring this up. So, these anchors, let me adjust this. We're able to lift it up just a little bit like that. I go a little bit higher. And then we go up here. We're getting there. And then look at that, perfectly right on. As all of these piers officially settle and it gets loaded, they're all gonna sink and adjust a little bit. So we'll come back through after a few months, re-level everything one more time. That's why we went with these guys. So we leveled everything out. Now we're gonna set the first beam on top. I'm just gonna hold it. I'm gonna set a couple stabilizer screws and we'll officially have set the first beam. We got M over here setting the rest of, go ahead. <laughs> and the rest of all the little Simpson ties. We're gonna screw everything else, then we'll go build the next two beams here. These 
understand what we're doing here? All right, babe, you can explain it. That's what are we gonna do? Put the next beam on? Yeah. We're putting the next beam on. YouTube, I don't know. <laughs> YouTuber in the making right there. <laughs> All right. I wanna make sure we set this middle one exactly in line with these two. So that's why we set the outer two. And I'll run a string line from here to there, and then we'll just scooch the center beam directly on that string line. gonna finish putting on the rest of the Simpson ties on the center beam but if you check it out we got all three beams set what we're gonna do is take these Simpson hangers put them on the inside of the boards right here and run them this way so we can stabilize it this way and then we'll also put some kickers some 45 kickers on these posts to give it even more lateral support this way 28 in oh that's it yeah what? That one's dead on. That's just like I drew it. Seven feet on the button. Check it out. M and I. Nice work, M. We have got all the lateral braces in. At least, at least the laterals between the beams. So we've added all of these braces in there, 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 and there. And then we're gonna take these two by 12s and shoot them across this way to make up the joists for the floorboards. Day two for framing the space. So I was talking to one of my coworkers at work. I'm in the construction general contracting world. And he was giving me some pointers on how to frame out with all the floor joists. And Emily and I were setting all these floor joists and then I was gonna come back through and fill it with blocking, but I must have had a total brain fart. I'm realizing now it'd be way simpler and this is what he suggested. Just cutting a whole bunch of blocking here and as we're setting the blocking, we also set the floor joists. That way everything is super tight together. I don't have to worry about like pounding in blocking after the fact. So that's what I'm gonna go do. I'll cut a handful of blocking and then we'll start setting all the floor joists. I also removed that string line we were using. It was kind of getting in the way and I figure a laser is a much better way to do it. You can't like accidentally bump a laser. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set this up at the end so I'm not bumping it at all. Um, but we'll use that to set the back of this plane right here. Another nice thing about pre-cutting all my blocking is that it will perfectly space this out so when we are laying four by eight sheets, they're gonna perfectly line up so the seams land right on top of one of these floor joists. This is working so much better because now I'm also able to nail in this way and it makes this entire floor one rock solid system. So I set the first couple floor joists, I set the first eight feet of them. And before I go finish the rest of them and like pretty much put a lot of load on the foundation here, I'm gonna add all the kickers. So all the 45s coming off these posts because right now, right now this thing doesn't wobble like any bit this way because that's the way that the beams and all the like Simpson strong ties are braced. But when I set all the 45 posts coming off of the piers, I'm gonna set them and connect them directly to the floor joists so they have a lot of carry and they don't allow the thing to shake like at all. So like here, this is just a temporary board. I'm gonna take that off. I just want everything to be super stable. But here, I'll have a 45 coming up there, one jutting off that way, and then we'll have some coming up from the underside up there up there there yeah let's go jump into it i'll go cut a bunch of 45s and start putting them on so this is the plan for each of the posts see this kicker is tied into one of the floor joists we got a four by four oh the camera's all messed up we got a four by four here and i'm going to do that to every single one of them and then we'll go set the rest of the floor i just walked on top of this to see like how much it locks it in and it's shocking how much it's just rock solid now. Ooh, staple just poked me in the butt. Fortunately, I just got a tetanus shot like uh, five or six months ago when I put that screw in my shoulder while building the spiral staircase. Any of you guys that remember that are the, the true bin OGs. 
don't mind this 2x12 that's hanging down. I know it looks sloppy. It was just for Em and I to keep them stable while we were first standing the beams. So these beams don't really matter. Holy cow, those hold on so tight. There we go. Trying to get the most out of it. So that looks like, yeah, right about there. That's insane how much it locks it in. So now we'll go do the kicker off this way. And to do it on the other side. Ow. Well, and there it is. So that's how I'm doing the middle ones. That's how I'm doing the corners and sides. And I'll go do it to the rest of them real quick now. You guys have been commenting saying you liking the little like cost breakdowns. So far, all my hardware that I bought from Lowe's, like the Simpson ties, screws, lags, all that cost this much. And my lumber for the base has so far cost me this much. Okay, so I just finished putting on all these horizontal supports here. You can see them kicking out. So that keeps the whole structure from moving this way. And then these guys that are attached to the center post keep the beams from moving this way. So I got some there, one there, and another one there. So. Those are attached directly to the floor joists and even just walking up on top of it. Now that all those supports just on that half are done, it's like not going anywhere. I'm gonna keep framing out the floor here and when we hit the next set of beams, I'll attach the joists and do these lateral braces again. So let's uh, keep flying. We got two and a half hours till the guest checks in and I can't, I can't be super loud. Right, I'm gonna get like three more rows done, then I'm gonna go do the supports that go in the middle here to keep it from swaying this way. Cause like if you see, it'll shake a little bit this way. But once we put those supports on, it like, it's rock solid. So I've only got like seven more floor joists left to do right there, but before we do, I'm gonna lock in all these supports. That's not going anywhere. We'll do the other side. I have all of the floor joists set here. I have one more to set, but before I do that, I'm gonna go take a measurement from the corner, to corner here, and corner to corner there to make sure that we're perfectly square. Otherwise, it'll be like a, like a parallelogram, you know, like where it's shifted and one wall will be longer. Or... So, I'm just trying to make sure it's square. <laughs> oh, and I also still have to set some kickers coming off here and some kickers coming off there. And then we can go lay the sheathing on top, which will be the floor that we're actually walking on. I was going through the comments and a bunch of you guys asked how these adjustable anchor bolts are gonna work. And they're saying how you're gonna do it's never gonna work. And let me show you what I did. So essentially what I did was I took a jack and I jacked up this beam. This one was a little bit low, for example. So I jacked up this beam off the ground. I had to go up like an eighth inch. All I had to do was take the load off of this. I screwed the nut down a little bit because the threaded portion of this rod just sticks down into the concrete. So all we did is we lifted it up an eighth inch, screwed this down like not even a full full turn and then took the load off the jack and it dropped right back down and now it's perfectly level you know what i cut them too long i gotta take an inch and a half off these guys forgot that the end floor joist needs to be two studs right next to each other so that the load is being distributed over two two by twelves instead of just this one So now that the two end caps are doubled up, we're just gonna be doing one single two by 12 here to cap it off, and then we'll start setting the sheathing for the floor.
right, check it out. So the entire floor is framed now. All I have to do is add the three quarter tongue and groove sheathing on top and then the floor is completely framed. I'm like, I'm shocked. Not shocked, but like obviously there's a lot of bracing in here. But this thing is so rock solid. Like there's no sway or shake to it at all. Like, I'm trying to like, see if this thing's gonna be blowing in the wind and it, <laughs> it will not. This is gonna be, this is gonna be one solid little home. My plan with the sheeting the floor is using this three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood, some glue if you've ever been in a cabin and the floors are squeaking. It's probably because they didn't use glue when they were setting the sheeting. So this pretty much just makes the base one solid system. So every single floor joist, I'll be laying a whole bunch of this heavy duty liquid nails. So I've, I use this stuff on the bin and it, it did wonders. No, there's not a single squeak in the floors. And I know that this line is perfectly straight because we set this with the laser, which means that the flip side is also perfectly straight. But what we might have some variance in is these beams right here. So we're, I'm gonna actually gonna overhang this just a little bit so that I can set a chalk line and cut a perfectly straight line in case there's any sort of bow. But without further ado, let's get to it. Oh, and I'm also gonna be screwing these down, not nailing them because, say for instance, like worst case scenario, the glue lets loose a little bit. Some of the nails might be able to back themselves out, but if we use screws, there's no way they back themselves out. need to do that till this is all done. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna set a time lapse and go plow through it. All right guys, we just wrapped up another day framing the floor for the Cedar Hollow and fortunately we are almost done. So I laid all the underlayment today. It was like ungodly hot out. So it was kind of a brutal day. But underlayment's all done. The only thing I have yet to wrap up is cutting off all the overhangs. I just ran it long so that I'd be able to set a perfectly straight line which Emily and I put a shot a little chalk line. Tomorrow I'll be out here cutting the final perimeter and that will kick off the next video which is framing the walls. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see how the Cedar Hall it turns out. If you guys have any questions or comments please drop them below. I love chatting with you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Hello? <laughs> I'm done. I'm sorry. Okay, so. That was my best ever impersonation. <laughs> so now that we... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now that we have all... What? I was dead on! You said the same thing! Now that we have now all, that we have all the bridges... <laughs> we're gonna set the floor joists now. <laughs>